Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel, Python for Microscopists. In today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about k-means clustering. And as the name suggests, this is a clustering algorithm that we're going to talk about. And uh, you use this whenever you would like to sort your data into various clusters. Uh, and uh, when I say data, that includes images. Yeah. Your image is nothing but uh, a bunch of pixel values, right, with certain dimensions. So you can actually cluster your pixel values into various uh, segments or clusters, if you want to call that. And this is nothing but the process of segmentation of your image. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to use k-means to segment your images. But for now, let me just stick to the basics so we understand exactly how the k-means clustering algorithm works in the background. So uh, let me jump into explaining this. So for that, let's actually take a uh, situation where, okay, I have, uh, let's change the color first. I don't like red. Uh, so let's say we have a bunch of data. I mean, just to keep things simple, let's uh, say, okay, this is my data and I want to divide this into two different uh, clusters. It can be divided into any number of clusters, right? If you say your uh, k value, which is nothing but the number of clusters. If your k equals to 2, then you can kind of see that it may be this cluster versus that. If k equals to 3, maybe one down here, one in the middle, and these could be the other one. So you as a user need to know how many clusters you want. And by the way, the k-means cluster is, uh, uh, you know, it falls under... Uh, you know, unsupervised machine learning segmentation techniques. There are two types, right? I mean, supervised segmentation where you are providing a bunch of labeled data. Uh, you're feeding that into the algorithm so it learns about how the labeled data looks like and then predicts future raw data based on the training. Now, unsupervised is nothing but you're just feeding the data and you're telling the system that, okay, divide this into, uh, in this example, divide this into, let's say, two clusters. Then it's going to automatically divide this. So it learns as it's actually uh, uh, looking at the data itself. So there is no pre-training and then saving the model and then you know, using it on future data sets uh, when it comes to this unsupervised segmentation. So how does the k-means actually work? Well, it's actually a couple of lines in Python, but let me just quickly explain how it looks uh, uh, in the, you know, uh, how it actually works. Initially, let's say if I say my k equals to 2, right? I mean, which means I want this data to be divided into two clusters. It uh, randomly picks two locations for uh, centroids, okay? So let me just exaggerate. So this is centroid number 1, and uh, let's say this is centroid number 2, okay? So now, as a next step, yeah, as a next step, it actually calculates the distance of each point from each of these centroids. So what is the distance from that point to this centroid, that to this centroid, and so on. All of these data points to this centroid and also to the other one, not just this. So what is the distance between each of the data point to each of these centroids? So now, why does it do that? As a next step, it sorts this data into anything that's closer to C1 compared to C2 will be assigned a label of C1. Uh, just for the fun of it, let's actually make that label red, okay? So anything that's uh, closer to C1 is labeled as red. So all these data points up here will be, uh, let's say, labeled as red. And all the other data points, let's just call it blue, and all the other data points are going to be uh, blue right here, okay? And in this example, I'm just showing that, okay, we got everything right in the first step. Maybe the, the, the first step is the centroid goes somewhere over here and then somewhere over there. But uh, hopefully you got the idea. So based on the distance from centroid to the data point, the data point gets assigned a class or assigned uh, a label. So now it updates the centroid. C1 doesn't make sense anymore. So it takes all the red data points. Well, I circled it in blue, but it takes all the red data points. It takes all the blue data points and calculates the centroids independently. So what is the centroid of this? Uh, meaning averages all these data points, right? So it averages everything. And then average means it falls somewhere in the middle right here. And similarly for red, uh, I don't have to. Oh, well, let's 
switch it for the fun of it and there it is so the centroid for the red is right there now it does exactly the same exercise what is the distance between each data point and red and also what is the distance between each of these data points to the red and same thing so same exercise as before distance from each point to red and blue and it updates the red and blue positions based on the new assignments. And it does this exercise until, or it iterates this until uh, the centroids do not change or some criteria is met. I mean, uh, as users, we can actually set some criteria. One of the criteria would be, uh, uh, let's say maximum iterations reached. Let's say I want only like 100 iterations and uh, uh, once 100 iterations are reached, it stops doing this exercise and then we will have the new centroid values and the new labels, that's it. So what we want as an output is new labels and if we care about centroids, it also reports the centroids, okay? So this is, uh, uh, in a way, uh, at a high level, how k-means actually works. If you want to get, dig into the math behind this, obviously go Google search or, or search on YouTube. There are numerous videos that talk about this. So let me actually, uh, right in this video, let's actually get into a few lines of code with some test data so we can see exactly how it's implemented in uh, uh, in Python. And then in the next tutorial, like I promised, I would actually uh, use this k-means technique to segment uh, an image. So let's uh, fire up our uh, spider interface and uh, start coding. So I created a dummy data set uh, Excel, Excel file that we can actually go ahead and import and let's start by importing the light library. So anytime we're dealing with data, you know pandas, let's import that as PD and I also uh, I thought of importing pyplot for plotting, but let's uh, for a change use uh, Seaborn. Okay, so let's not import that. Okay, so the data that I created is uh, in the form of Excel. So let, let's read Excel file. Okay, and as you can imagine, I call this k means.xlsx. Okay, so usually when I write type something, I just run this. And if no errors, then that means I didn't make a mistake. Now let's go ahead and uh, look at the header, uh, like the first five rows. And as you can see, this is very simple. I just uh, created two columns, X and Y, uh, and then X goes from one through 150, I believe, and Y has some random numbers, and this should actually, let's actually look at it, why not? Uh, import seaborn as s and s and let's just do and our x values are from our data frame and this is nothing but x right i mean my our column name is x in our data frame and y values again are coming from our data frame where the column name has been labeled uh has been labeled y and uh, um, let's go ahead and plot this. So there you see, uh, I have about three clusters, right? If you look at it, in fact, this line by default in uh, Seaborn, it actually tries to fit it. So let's actually not fit anything. So it looks easier for us to, yeah. So here, this can be two clusters, right? I mean, one on the bottom here and the other one on the top, or this could be three clusters, one down here, one up there, and one right here. So as a, as, as a user, you need to know exactly what the problem you're trying to solve by clustering. So you can uh, 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 make an informed decision in terms of how many clusters you would like to divide this into. So for now, let's say we want to divide this into three uh, clusters, okay? So let's comment these two, we don't need that. So uh, where does, there are a couple of uh, locations where you can use, I mean, uh, libraries where you can actually bring in k-means. Uh, for data analysis like this, scikit-learn is pretty good. If you wanna do image-based analysis, I recommend OpenCV, and I'm gonna talk about that in the next tutorial. So for now, let's stick with scikit-learn, okay? And it's under cluster, okay? And let's import k and I believe uppercase m. Okay, yeah, k-means. And uh, let's actually look at the documentation for how to use this. I mean, 
we can I can just say k means k m e a n s you know my k means equals to k okay and I'd like to understand you can see uh, in a way here you know that number of clusters again uh, in our case this would be three in it equals to k means plus plus and if you look at the documentation again look at scikit-learn documentation uh, it talks about what it is I think that's the default uh, initialization this is nothing but how to initialize the first uh, centroids again uh, uh, and then uh, you have maximum number of iterations equals to 300. Again, it reaches uh, if it reaches that uh, number of iterations, it it stops it. And then you can say uh, a random state and a couple others. So let me go ahead and let's actually define our n clusters as three number of clusters as three, and it equals to k means I think uh, that's it. And uh, let's also do max iterations as uh, 300 and uh, initialize is uh, 10 and uh, again you can read the documentation if you want to know uh, learn more about what that is so random state equals to zero okay so that's it so i just defined uh, let me expand this so you can see the full again this is nothing but i am not inventing obviously any of this i just looked at the documentation literally pasted the whole thing okay so this is initializing the k-means algorithm now let's actually fit it okay so again this is very similar to any other machine learning i mean linear regression logistic regression videos if you watch my videos we first initialize this and then we fit it and then we predict i'm doing exactly the same so let's actually let me call mo model equals to k means uh, dot fit okay and what are we fitting this to my data frame okay that's it now we have that we can go ahead and predict uh, if i can type it predicted values okay is uh, my k means dot predict that's it. So now uh, let's go ahead and plot it. In fact, let's run it to make sure everything looks okay. So everything seems to be okay. But how do I know what's? I mean, we need to we need to get some uh, look at the output. So uh, for that, let's actually uh, uh, from matplotlib import uh, pyplot as plt. Right. I mean, I usually type it right in the beginning, but anyway. Uh, so let's do a scatter plot of my data frame okay and uh, let's look at our x values and look let's look uh, let's also plot our y values over there right okay so i got my x i got my y okay and let's color based on predicted values and uh, I mean, if you don't do any of this, uh, I mean, actually, let's uh, let me remove this for a second. Oops. OK, so now let's go ahead and plot it. So in this case, I'm just. Uh, well, I may have made some sort of a mistake right there. Yeah, obviously. And if I plot this, you should see. Oh, OK. So this, this. OK. Ta -ta 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 third time is a charm there you go so this is nothing but what i've done earlier right i mean we looked at this using our seaborn plot but this is right now i'm using uh, a matplotlib but this is not what i want i want to look at the output so i want to color this and uh, size is 50 let's say and uh, cmap to make sure it looks nice uh, uh, i like this one the aridis okay so if you look at that, now you can actually see them colored based on what cluster they belong to. Okay, this dark color, these are all my cluster one, that's cluster two and cluster three. Okay, this is it. Uh, K-means is as simple as this. And in fact, if you are curious about where the centers ended up, you know, for the last, uh, uh, the final center. So K-means, I think dark cluster, yeah, centers right there. And uh, let's look at zero, and then we'll also look at one. Uh, K means dot, again, cluster centers, 
and one is that good okay so that's uh, and let's also color this by uh, maybe a little larger size 200 so we can see them clearly and let's uh, color them in black okay um, but then I already have a dark one so let's actually do alpha equals to 0 0.5 so it's a kind of transparent in a way okay so let's go ahead and plot it and uh, there you go so here are the final centroids that it actually the k-means actually found out so uh, just to summarize again this is very clear I hope from this uh, example just to summarize k-means is nothing but okay you have a bunch of data it initializes you know uh, the initial centroids and then calculates the distance for each of these point and then assigns the uh, data points to a specific uh, to a specific cluster to a specific label based on its distance from that centroid okay and then that gets modified and that gets modified uh, uh, via each iteration and eventually it finds the centroids and then it stops when a certain criteria is reached in this case it can be maximum number of iterations or uh, any of the other criteria that you can actually uh, define. So this is k-means uh, uh, using some sort of a, you know, in this case, like some sort of a made-up data. But in the next tutorial, let's actually use k-means to segment uh, a, a scanning electron microscope image. It can be any image. It can be a color image. It can be a picture of, it can be your selfie. Okay, it doesn't matter. Let's read in an image and segment it in the next tutorial. So I hope you found this uh, tutorial to be educational, first of all, and useful. If so, please go ahead and like it. And if you like this series, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.